So, so Don, the quantum chains that I mentioned before in the length of the trains into uh, Brisbane uh, was certainly a step forward, but we haven't had that same quantum change in transit time. And as a result of that, we have that huge differentiation between what trucks can get to Brisbane in and what trains can get to Brisbane with. And trains have still got that pick-up and delivery process that, that, that has an issue with them. Recently, we retabled the timetables from Melbourne through to Brisbane, and we asked our customers whether they wanted faster transit or more reliable transit, and they went for reliability. Uh, but, but, but we do have a real limitation on that corridor with transit. Don? Yes, I just like to say that uh, and prior to uh, giving his talk this morning, we were having a quiet chat with Duncan Gay, and uh, we talked about with the Mayor of uh, Parks, he said something, I think, and uh, we were talking about the inland rail. And uh, he was of the view, and I'm not quite sure where this is going to go, where he got that view that industry was uh, not in favour of uh, the inland rail. And I'm just quite concerned about that because I think uh, we should, we're somewhere along the line, he's getting some misinformation and we need to be uh, on top of that. Comments from the industry? Come for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, John, if, if the minister's getting that, it's probably uh, what Greg highlighted that someone actually does need to do the full um, cost benefit analysis of what is going to come out of that. Because if we if we just replicate an inland rail and we create the same thing we have on the coast and we still don't deal with the issue of transit time, um, then it's a nil sum game. So, yeah, there is also one. Um, I think you know, there, there is a lot of forums around and, uh, uh, and they're a little bit hard to keep up with and I'm not too sure to what extent um, the rail operators are really part of those um, discussions, to be honest. Okay, great. The, I know the Australasia Railway Association has is, is got a strong theme of supporting the inland rail corridor that uh, ARTC is reviewing and working on now. So I, I believe the industry is fully behind and I don't think it has been communicated particularly well and I think all operators haven't been given the opportunity to put the input in that's needed. Uh, uh, that's, that's my view. Uh, so I do think you know, what uh, Don just said with regards to the Minister's <coughs> lack of clarity might need to be the industry needs to do a lot more to, to, to show the benefits of, of, of this particular nation building asset, uh, which is what it would be. Um, and I think a lot of customers would get a huge benefit. Uh, that's my first one. Yeah. ARTC has now been um, called to the table and are part of John Anderson's committee and have hired a uh, executive general manager to run that particular project. Uh, so Don, I, you know, I, I'm not sure where that has come from. Um, but I think the real issue is the cost benefit analysis as to say when it is needed. Uh, it's not not that it's needed, it's just when that it's needed. And, and look, those corridors that I talked about before that had success, where we had very large market share, it's all based on corridors where we're able to achieve double stacking. And that's what we need to get Melbourne and Brisbane, double stack trains coming out of Melbourne into Brisbane. And that's where we'll talk about market shares of 45 and 50% into Brisbane. 